Hi everyone, I'm Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance, and today I have something very special for you. I joined forces with Fallon from Create Beauty Daily with Fallon, and um, I'll put a link to her channel here and also in the description. Her and I decided that we both loved this book, A Piece of Cake, and it's by Pita Peace from the Patchwork Place, and uh, we decided to pick a quilt, actually a table runner from this book, and both make the exact same table runner using the exact same fabric. And we chose Gingham Gardens by my mind's eye, and it's uh, distributed by Riley Blake. So we're going to be using this line of fabric. We're gonna be making the exact same uh, pattern. However, I'm going to make a dark background and she's gonna make it with a light background. So we wanna show you how the exact same pattern, exact same fabric can look differently when you use different backgrounds of fabric. So let's get started first by picking the pieces of fabric I'm going to use. Now, I do wanna give you a disclaimer. I am not gonna give you all the measurements, of course, from this book. This isn't my pattern. I don't own it. It is copyrighted, of course, and I would never steal somebody else's work. So, uh, but I will give you some tips and tricks as we go through it uh, and how I'm making it. Uh, if you're interested in buying this book, I'll put a link below. I don't get any money for this book. I'm not being sponsored anything like that or the fabric or any of this stuff, uh, but it is a really beautiful book and it is really well written and the directions are great. So let's get started by picking the fabrics that I'm going to use in this table runner. First, let me show you what I bought. So I got the Gingham Garden uh, by Riley Blake and it's my mind's eye is the name of the uh, line and I got the layer cake. So uh, there's a bunch, I don't know how many, I think 40 maybe, uh, 10 by 10 squares pre-cut in this packet. And then I also bought some backgrounds that were darker from that line. You can see, um, I'm not sure exactly which background I'm using, but I will soon figure that out. I do know from this line, I need to have 11 10 by 10 blocks for the pattern. So let's get started picking them out. And as I pick them out, I'm going to show you my thought process through it, okay? So I don't want dark prints because the background of my table runner is going to be dark. Let's see if I can get this open without cutting the fabric. These are so pretty. I'm glad we picked these fabrics. I love that on the back, it shows you each in the line. Pull that off. All right. Okay, so we don't want any dark prints because our background's going to be dark. So I'm gonna pull the dark prints out and I know I'm not gonna be using them. So let's look at just the light prints. So we got some pinks and I'm gonna take out my doubles too. Okay, so I pulled out, I took out all the doubles and I took out all the dark prints. And you can see there's some duplicates of patterns. So for example, uh, this green and this beigey yellow and this blue and this pink, it's the same exact pattern uh, in a different colorway. And that happens of course a lot in uh, pre-cut bundles. One of the reasons we pick this particular line of fabric is because there's not a lot of directionals. And when you, especially when you're a beginner quilter, you want to stay away from directional fabric. And what do I mean by that? So you can see like this fabric has a direction, okay, while this fabric, on the other hand, is an overall pattern. So if you cut it maybe not straight, or um, your layout isn't perfect, you don't notice any problems. Whereas this one, if it gets cut not straight, you're gonna kind of notice it because it is a, um, a directional print. So sometimes it's better to stay away from them, especially if you're beginning. Even if you're not beginning, you just want an easy project, you might wanna stay away from directional prints. So I'm gonna pull all the directional prints out of this and we're gonna see what we're left with. So 
so I took all of the directional prints out and um, the other thing I'm going to take out just because I don't think they're going to show up really well with this particular pattern because the pieces are somewhat small or at least the strips are somewhat small I'm going to pull out all the big prints too so see how if I were to cut a strip and only got say this portion of it it would be blank in the middle and the pattern really would be lost and in a way wasted. So I'm gonna pull out the big prints as well. And there are two. This one sort of is, but I don't think it's bad. So let's see what I'm left with. I need 11. Let's see if I'm at left with 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Now I did not plan that. I know you probably don't believe me, but I did not plan that there are 11 here. And I think I like them all. They all, of course, go. Let's see, which would I pull out? I think I'm gonna take out some of these, one of these blues at least. And I think I am gonna take out this one. All right, and I did that just because there are a lot of blues in this, and I don't want it to be overloaded with blues. Okay, I like that palette for the most part, but I am partial to gingham. And even though it's a directional, I'm gonna break my own rule and I'm gonna throw a gingham in there because I just love it. Okay, so those are my 11 fabrics. Let's double check. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 fabrics. And I'm going to get cutting. Uh, of course, I can't tell you the, the sizes. So I'm just gonna cut these off camera and I will meet you back here. Okay, all of my pieces are cut. Uh, this is just a sampling of them and I'm going to decide on a background fabric. So I have this one here and I bought this one and I bought this one. But because these all these fabrics are part of the line, I'm just going to pull the fabric squares so we can get a better idea of what goes best with them. So I just, I just want to clarify, I bought the layer cake with the 10 inch squares in a whole pack. And then I bought yardage that went with it that I thought would go well. So that's what these packets are. When you look at any of these pre-cuts, you can usually buy, I think most of the time, I would say all of the time really, you can buy yardage to go with it as long as it's not sold out. So uh, let's see what I have here. These are the three that I picked. One needs to be the backing, one needs to be the accent fabric, and one needs to be the binding. So right off the bat, I love a gingham binding. So I'm gonna use the gingham for that. To decide which of these I wanna use as my accent, I really love this print. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go with this as the accent and this is the backing. Okay, so this is gonna be my accent fabric. So I'm gonna press out the yardage and I'm gonna cut the pieces now. All right, so here are my accent pieces. This is uh, my main fabrics and this is my binding and my backing. So I am ready to go, everything is cut. So I'm gonna get this ready to sew, sew it together and make a table runner. Okay, so it's the next day. Uh, I got very frustrated and it was time to quit when I started making stupid mistakes. I don't know if you can relate to that or not. However, I did, um, I did wanna explain what happened. So I did choose this really pretty floral print for the background. I just laid these on top. And I just didn't like how busy the block was turning out. Even though it still you know, had a lot of contrast, I didn't like this dark. So instead of making like all the blocks and just pushing through, I realized as a quilter that sometimes you just have to stop and re-evaluate. And what I did was I, I took the block that was all put together and I just cut some of the other fabric and folded it in half for these triangles, okay? And I placed it on top just to see what it would look like and see if I liked it better. Instead of cutting all the pieces again, at first I just wanted to interview it and see if this is a prettier layout and I liked it a lot better so through I'll take these off and you can see that the block is now done and it is done with the other fabric so I had to go back to the drawing board and decide how I was going to adjust this because I had already cut a lot of my pieces so I had to go back to my stack and pull some other fabrics so that's kind of the nice thing about having a 
a lot of leftovers in a layer cake because it allowed me to do this. Uh, so, you know, just keep that in mind that if you know things are going wrong to stop it early, it will save you a lot of time. The next thing I wanted to talk to you about were these half square triangles. So the directions tell you to put the squares on the corners, draw a line diagonal on those squares and then lay it on your block and stitch on that line. I'm going to give you a few tips now about how I do that exactly. So to do this, I do exactly what you're supposed to do where you take it and you lay it onto your fabric like this. You kind of want to line it up with this one. And I'm not a huge fan of this method because I feel like the, the blocks always come out a little off, but I am doing it anyway. It's what it called for. And honestly, it's one of the easier ways to do it. So I line it up here with my point. I did draw my line. However, uh, this line, you know, may or may not be right exactly diagonal. So I do use this tape to put my points right on that red line. And I sew. Easy enough, right? Okay, so there's a few things you can do at this point. You can sew a half an inch over and then get yourself a bonus block, which I'm gonna do right now. And I'm just gonna eyeball it. It's not critical that that's perfect. All right, and then instead of doing anything else yet, I'm gonna take this over, press it, cut it, and then finger press it back. And let me show you how I do that. So I'm gonna set the seam. Boy, I did get wonky on that, didn't I? Sorry, it's gonna all be good. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my scissors. Now, a lot of times they'll say to press this back uh, first and then cut it. I find that that makes it just a little too bulky and it doesn't give you a nice crisp seam. So I'm just gonna cut about a quarter of an inch down. This is a bias edge now, okay? So it's very, very stretchy bo on both sides of this block. So what I do is very carefully fold that over and then I finger press it with my nail, but ever so gently. I do not wanna distort that piece, okay? Because I want it to be nice and crisp and right, to be honest. So with after I finger press it down, I'm going to lay my iron on it to press it. I do not want to push it out because you're going, it is a biased edge. It is going to stretch and get distorted. So I'm going to respect the bias and just lay it like that. That's how I do it. Right or wrong, it's the way I do it. Now, this is my little bonus piece and I did this on a lot of my pieces. Um, again, I'm gonna gently, ever so gently, push that over, take my iron, press it, and then I can trim that down for another project. So when I do trim this down, I can get a nice edge and get it all less wonky. We'll have to go to a smaller one with my lock block rulers. So, you know, even though it wasn't exactly straight and you could draw that line and do all that, but you know what, I'm not gonna be that fussy. And um, I would just cut this down and get your square. I'll put a picture here of that. So the top is finished, yay! It looks so pretty, it was so much fun to make. And I'm so happy that I decided to change that fabric out from the uh, very busy floral to a more subdued floral. So it really turned out pretty, I love it. So I'm gonna quilt it now. I did square it up, sandwich it, and I am going to use this Aurifil thread, it's yellow. It's yellow, what's the number, 2130. And I'm going to quilt it exactly as they showed in the book. And uh, let's get started quilting this table runner. So it is finished.
I absolutely love it. Uh, it turned out so pretty. So I did the matchstick quilting, like the book recommended or showed at least. I felt like if the artist uh, thought that was the best pattern, I would go with it. And I did that. Uh, but then I also uh, wasn't thrilled with the way it was like getting a little distorted because of all the back and forth with the lines. So I added some extra lines, just eight of them, almost to give it like a plaid effect. And it turned out beautifully. I just, I absolutely love it. It's a great table runner. It's a great pattern. Definitely recommend picking up this book. And uh, I've made a couple things from it and I I love it and so springy and the dark background to me just um, kind of anchors it a little bit although I'm sure that the light background is going to look beautiful in Fallon's video as well. Uh, the binding that I chose just ties it all in and frames it well and I just I absolutely love it. So the back I ended up piecing because the piece I had wasn't long enough because of the mistake. Uh, I had already pre-cut the, the pieces and I didn't have enough. So I had to piece the back and I just took some scraps from uh, the uh, mistakes that I made actually and uh, just added the strip piece in it. And one of the skills I worked on with this is get, getting that back straight because I always have trouble when I do a piece back, I always have trouble getting it straight, but I worked on it really hard and ended up getting it nice and straight. Now you're probably wondering what happened to the other pieces because I did have some pieced work done. So I made this sweet little quilt, which I actually showed in an earlier video, uh, and it's the same line and it, it just, it also turned out really cute. I haven't done anything with the bonus blocks yet, but I intend to. Maybe by the time I publish this video, I'll be able to put a picture of that here. I'm not sure if it'll be done or not, but We'll see. Uh, just a sweet little bonus project that you can make sometimes when you're using that stitch and flip method of piecing. So I just want to take a moment and thank Fallon for doing this with me. It's been a, an adventure, a lot of text messages back and forth, a lot of talking about how we were doing it and how we were doing and life kind of got in the way. So it's taken us a little longer than we had hoped, but it's here and it is ready for you to see the comparison of the two table runners. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also check out Fallon's channel and see what she did with this exact same pattern in exact same fabric and a different background. Uh, thank you so much as always for watching and I will see you next time. Have a great day and make sure you take some time to sew.